Party people in the place to be. Live from 58 Dream Street. We're James with games. Wow, I didn't put my glasses on well at all there, but that's okay. Easy to adjust. Happy Saturday, folks. Hail Cedric. This is it. One final ride. We believe. But, like, here's the thing. I think I've solved the technical difficulties, and if I had, then boom. This isn't going to take long. If I'm wrong... Because I, I did not test my solution like to the point that I actually finished the game and watched the ending without everybody. So, I don't know. But I think it's going to work. I think it's going to work. Hello, British. I missed you all yesterday, too. I really quite did. Uh, yeah. It was just a, our, our errands ran late, which isn't that big a deal in its own. You know, I'll just push the stream a little. But the... The last errand was that we, we, we swung by the vet to, to bring Astra home. So I needed, I needed a bigger buffer between that errand and like coming live. So here we are, but I'm feeling okay today. You know, one day at a time. And it's a, it's a rainy day, Astra's favorite kind of day. So I'm trying to enjoy that for her. Breathe in some of that rainy air. And yeah, here we are. Goody Goody James, one last ride. I mean, also, Goody Goody James will show up in pretty much every other game I play. But the next time we play Quest for Glory uh, in the medium future, it will not be Goody Goody James. It'll be the anti-hero run, which I'm, I've been hard at work for like a month now, thinking of all the things that happen in this game uh, and, and trying to imagine how I'm going to role play uh, as some callow jerk. Uh, through all of those things. So I'm excited for that. That will be fun. I played, like, when I play tabletop games with my friends, I pretty much exclusively play weird jerks. Every now and then I, I'll do, like, a a, a pure you know, baby face hero. But typically I'm, like, some kind of weird jerk. <laughs> uh, or uh, once, not a jerk, but once I uh, convinced a DM to let me play two tabaxi characters. So the tabaxi are like cat people. And so I made Avra and Astra. And not uh, their names uh, were uh, Twilight Thunderclap and Tempest at Dawn. Twilight being Avra and Tempest being Astra. And so they were very lovely characters who were very friendly to everybody. But I did really get into the what would a cat what are, what are some cat behaviors i can do here like like maybe astra will just sit out this entire battle she's just everyone else charged into the cave and she just sat down and just like my turns kept coming and i was like yeah uh, you know tempest is just like you know licking her paw and, <laughs> and cleaning her hair and stuff like that so i'm excited to try to bring that to the table uh video game wise though i never play i, I can't do it i'm bad at it uh, committing to being a jerk. So I'm getting some practice in Elden Ring now, actually, because I had to pick up Elden Ring for the first time since it was out. Since my original playthrough, I picked it up so that I could do the DLC. And I had a, a new game plus that I'd started, but it was just like, you know, my new game regular, my first game, that playthrough, I was pretty thorough and I spent a lot of time on it at a certain, you know, I'm a variety guy, like how you see here on this stream. I don't pick one game and then just build an audience around it. I'm constantly picking new things. So I'm revisiting it. And what I had decided to do, because some people told me it was cool, was to do the Lord of Frenzied Flame ending in, a, in Elden Ring. So I was on that path before I'd stopped. And so I picked it up and I've been like clearing out all the stuff I need to do to get to the DLC, which I've now done. And I beat Melenia, Blade of Mikola, uh, for the first time. So that was gratifying because I didn't beat her on my first playthrough because my build was never going to work to beat her. Uh, and whenever I play, do a first playthrough of a Souls game, I pick a build and I commit to it and I make it work. <laughs> uh, but I could not make it work for that particular boss. So anyway, this is all to say that now that I picked it up, I actually... I had done everything in the in the frenzy Lord of Frenzied Flame questline except the like the big moment 
where you commit that that is your path. Like I had done, this is complete gibberish to anyone who hasn't played the game or read a lot about it, but I had done Hayeta's quest line and, but I hadn't gone to the frenzied flame prescription at the, at the bottom of the subterranean shunning grounds. Uh, so that's what I finally did, uh, on Friday and holy smokes, the, uh, the frenzied flame, like, so what happens is you get embraced by the three fingers, which is itself a really cool, like two minute cutscene of your character. Just like your character has to strip all the clothes off. You have to unequip everything before you can open this door. And then you go in and there's the three fingers. Cause when you're on the other paths, there's a, there's a being called the two fingers that kind of like gives obscure advice through a, through some person who can interpret its movements. Uh, but the three fingers are, are more sinister because the, the frenzied flame is an odor God that believes it can remember the unity of everything before creation. And it believes that, boy, it was, it, it was a mistake to create all this stuff. Cause once we started birthing souls and people started existing, that created the possibility of sin and suffering and everything. And what we need to do is go back to stillness and, and unity. Uh, and so you go in there naked and these three fingers, they wrap themselves around you and they're like, they have like flame running through them and they're like burning you. And when you leave uh, this room, having been embraced by the three fingers and becoming the host of the frenzied flame, you're a, uh, you're entirely, I think so. I'm not super familiar with Destiny lore, and hello, David. Uh, but yeah, the three fingers embrace you, and then when your character comes out, they are permanently just like burned all over their body, which is pretty cool. I, uh, I am now playing this character uh, topless just to enjoy the burns, uh, enjoy the aesthetic of the burns, and their eyes are glowing yellow. Like every enemy you meet that, that can do Frenzy Flame stuff in the game cool uh and then you have a final conversation with with hieta uh who has sort of guided you along this path and now she's going to become your maiden because the next time you rest at a site of grace the regular maiden who's on your quest uh, Mal uh melina she she shows up and is like oh you're the host of the frenzied flame now well we're not traveling together anymore our journey together is done and just so you know, if you try to sit the, the Elden Throne and become the Lord of Frenzied Flame, I will kill you. Goodbye, companion. And then she leaves forever. So now Hieta is your maid. And your final conversation with Hieta, she gives a big speech about basically what I just said, but more poetic. How, you know, everything was good once. Uh, oh, no. Oh, sorry. Melina says, goodbye, companion. Goodbye, Torrent. And you get to keep Torrent. Because I guess she knows that Torrin's bonded to you now or something. Uh, but that's all very cool. And then, yeah, and then Hieta gives this, like, really, really good monologue about exactly what I just said, about how everything was good when it was unity, and now they're suffering and sin, and it's bad. <laughs> exactly. And then her final line is, like, is that, you know, I can't remember the lead up to it, but it's something along the lines of, like, you know, everything will be one and still again. And then her last lines are, no more fractures, no more birth. And then she bursts into flames and just like burns up. Uh, I'm not sure if she'll ever appear again as my maiden or if she's just there in spirit. Anyway, I have no idea how the ending is going to portray the annihilation of all existence, but I'm pretty compelled by that. And I had just been like, you know, I'd heard it was cool. So I was doing it. I wasn't really thinking about it especially since I left two years in the middle of the quest. But ne like the scene was so effective and like disquieting and like, tr like genuinely troubling. And I felt like at first, like I was like, Oh man, I shouldn't, I shouldn't do this. <laughs> like <laughs> this is bad. Uh, and, and then I was like, okay, there it is. This is practice. This is where I learned to commit to being the bad guy. Uh, and so I, I hadn't done Rhea Lucaria, the, the, the Magic Academy, on my 
current playthrough, and I'm playing as a character who wields a katana in one hand and a glintstone staff to cast spells in the other hand. So I decided, all right, this character, you know, she has changed now. She has seen this, what she perceives to be this horrible truth that she is going to see through to the end. So her next step, so getting into the role playing, I haven't started the DLC yet. Uh, her next step is I unequipped the Glintstone staff. I said, I'm never casting another spell. And I went back to the Academy and I slaughtered my way through the whole Academy. Uh, and then because the Academy boss, in addition to the fact that, you know, killing the magic Academy was a cool sort of addendum to the character setting aside her magic staff. Uh, the boss of the magic Academy, once you've beaten her is the person who can respec you. And so I had her respec all my intelligence into faith. So now I can use the frenzy flame incantations and they are very, I've only used one of them. Uh, but it's like she, your character like grabs their eyes and hunches up and then screams in agony and then shoots frenzy fire out of their eyes at long range. Totally cool. Very, very cool stuff. Anyway, uh, so I'm in that. So the anti-hero in Quest for Glory will be much, much nicer than this because ultimately he's just going to be a jerk who does the right, like, you know, still saves the day. I don't think that I can play a thief run and then end all of existence in Quest for Glory 5 Dragonfire. I don't know. I guess we'll see. No spoilers, please. All right. So that's everything I have to say about Elden Ring right now. And now we're going to dive in to Quest for Glory 5. I am optimistic. I've solved the problem. It's not going to be an ideal setup for me, but I tested it yesterday and it at least kind of worked. And uh, as long as it all works, and it's not going to be ideal on the screen either because my mouse is trapped once I launch the game through GOG Galaxy, which is what I need to do to get the cutscenes to work. Uh, so... It's not going to, uh, it looked when I was checking it last time, like it, it will occupy most of the space I've set aside for the game, but it won't fill it. But I think it'll all be okay. We'll get through it. Probably won't take that long. I will savor it as much as I can and try to, you know, not let my final experience of Quest for Glory for now uh, be colored too much by the technical difficulties. And then, assuming it wraps up pretty quickly, which I think it will, uh, it'll be time for something completely different with Wizardry Gaiden 4. The throb of the demon's heart. Okay. That's my ado. Now let's do. Okay. So close and yet so far. One moment. I quit the game because I had drug the, I, I had the quest for, I had the GOG Galaxy launcher over the screen that I need to watch to play the game. But now, if I moved it to the other screen, it should. Why did this work last? Okay, you know what? It's fine. This is gonna be kind of strange. Okay, no, there's gotta be a way I can do this. Let me try one more time. Can I click play and then minimize the GOG Galaxy app window fast enough? Let's see. Is there a... Yeah, there's no keyboard shortcut. I'm going to try this. If I can't do it, I will just bite the... Oh, you know what? Maybe I can gimmick it by changing its position. If it's occupying the same position... Okay. Not optimal. I'm going to... One more try. Why don't I make the window tiny for the app? Oh, because of course, it is a non-resizable window for GOG Galaxy. Why? Why would you do that? Okay, whatever. So, it's quite possible I just won't be able to see the chat, which is a real drag, but I got one more idea. Nope, it just really, really wants to cover the chat. So, what are we, gonna, oh, you know what? No, I can see a version of the chat. Although I'm, it's gonna be weird. I'm gonna be looking away from the camera while I do this. Apologies for that. Wait, 
No, I'm not even gonna bother because I can't check the monitor. So I'll just leave it where it is. They'll get a weird profile on me, but at least I'm speaking right into the mic. Let's do it. Tashtari, hello! Well, okay, I can see most of the message. So I'm gonna guess, getting Quest for Glory 5 to work in a window is a huge pain in the ass. You got so frustrated, you ended up running it in a, and then I don't know what the last word is gonna be. But yes, very, like I got it working, but it can't do cutscenes, which ruins my ability to perceive the ending. Virtual machine. I have, I'm working on learning virtual machines because I wanna play the Japanese uh, PC, the Windows Lolo games, uh, but, don't have one going yet. So all right, we're gonna live with this. Here we go. Let's destroy that monster. Oh sweet. At least I did this. That's ocean. Can I keep my boys alive here? Is that possible? Is that a thing? Good, thanks. Okay. Whoa. Okay. We're gonna try. I'm gonna try this a few times because my preferred ending. Whoa. Is one where we all live. Nope, I died. It took to the skies. This part frustrates me a lot, plot-wise. It doesn't, like, we had to restore the pillar to hurt the thing, but now that the pillar's restored, why is there still a time limit where it can escape? Let's destroy that monster. Ooh, Okay, but anyway. Now we just mash the buttons, I guess. Last potion thanks to me. If like I would also like to save Gort, but I'm not as attached to Gort as I am to Toro. Feel like Elsa hopefully has plot armor. I shouldn't I should be using the health potions and not the uh Okay. I've killed it. I think everybody lived. Oh my goodness, and I'm just realizing now that my mouse is actually free. Oh! No, that was the dragon deciding to leave. Arg. Well, you know what? At least I can turn my face normally now that I realize that it's not trapping the mouse. <laughs> oh, weird. Parts of it, it, it is trapping the mouse now. Hmm. Maybe it's just during the cutscenes. Maybe it's actually launching like a mini quick time player or something. I don't know. Okay. All right. Okay. Let's destroy that monster. Okay. Yes, I agree, Elsa, but I really ought to be 
using health potions and not pills to try to help keep Gort alive. And I... And, and Toro. More importantly, Toro... Oh, don't tell Gort I said that. Okay, here goes... That was my fault. I lost track of my own health because I was worrying so much about Toro. Let's destroy but that hey, monster. That's my gimmick, right? I'm the goody goody. Okay. Okay. I'll say this, having just been playing some Elden Ring again. Uh, Elden Ring is better dragon fights. Sorry, Gord. Okay, no, no. I reject the death of Toro utterly. funny because like the tactics here that the dragon is using are pretty similar to what dragons in Elden Ring do. <laughs> Fights you on the ground for a bit and then it takes advantage. Fights you on the ground a little bit, takes to the sky, uses its breath weapon. The big difference of course is that Elden Ring has good combat. I'm sorry, Gordon. That's ocean. No, no, Toro. Ah, rejected. Yeah, the dragon doesn't need to play fair, but Let's like, that you know, I would like it if the game made it fun for me to try to overcome the dragon. <laughs> Potion, Gord. No, Gord's not even going to take the stupid potion I gave him. Oh, he did. Good job. Okay. Last potion. Damn it. Toro's down. I reject. Let's destroy that monster. It's possible I would have greater success. Actually, you know what? I was thinking for a moment. Like, what if I went back to the first phase and just, like, loaded Toro up with potions? But the first phase, you pretty much had to, like, there's not a moment to spare. All right. All right. Hard. 
good. Thanks. Okay. Sorry, Gord. Ah. The cave roof is starting to collapse. The dragon is breaking free of this cavern. Silmaria will be destroyed. God damn it. Let's destroy that monster. Run to Toro. Good, thanks. Good, thanks. Okay. Hit it, hit it, hit it, team. That's ocean. No, no, Toro. Hate it, hate it. This is not. I. It's okay. Quest for Glory is a wonderful series, and narratively, this game is a wonderful capstone. And many parts of this game were wonderful. But why was this set piece? Why would you make this Let's the climax to your game? Goddamn potion gourd? Why is Tor okay good, he took a potion. Yeah, the dragon's like dragon's breath should hit hard. But like it hits too hard. If only the game hadn't stripped me of my magic in the import Let's process. Destroy that monster. Or if only I could use my paladin spells to give Toro a magic shield too. But okay, let's try. Ocean, Toro, I'm begging you. Okay, this could be it. Except I, fuck, I died. Hey, right, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Let's destroy that monster. It's okay. It's okay. Oh, hi, Abra. You're right. Let me just fail at this battle like seven more times and then, because there's still five more minutes. <laughs> at least that game has good controls. Well. As long as you don't think too much about the first six games, that's good, good controls. Thanks. Good. Thanks. Okay, let's try this. Gotta remember to keep myself alive.
feel like this is actually it. Toro hasn't said last Lord's potion, has he? I'm sorry, Gord. But your sacrifice will not be in vain. No. Or is this a, is this the death animation? Yes. Okay. Well, it does feel good. And well, I mean, not that I wouldn't love to save Gort, but like a heroic sacrifice at the end feels good. Maybe does Gort's heroic sacrifice get me we out of heaven too? We did it. The dragon is destroyed forever. Hallelujah. The rights of rulership are over. Here are the heroes who have saved Silmaria. They have freed our fishing villages and driven the invaders off Marit. They have defeated the general of the mercenaries and made certain that they will never return to Silmaria's shores. Yes. They have dared the depths of Hades. We've and proved we have done. You know what? Valor. I'm paladin. They we did it all together. Peace I couldn't Atlantis have done it without these. And made the sea other safe heroes. for boats and travel. They have brought the unjust to justice and made the murderers pay for their crimes. Hey Logos, you should have mentioned the, the Hydra. Of doom, and the prophecy of Silmaria's Elsa did help with the Hydra. Will not come to pass. These are the ones who averted this die. And they did all help with the These are thing. the heroes of Silmaria. And Gort though. Come on. Oh. One person has proven himself beyond others. Yeah, that's true. He has shown again and again the true meaning of heroism. He has earned the title of hero in four lands and again in ours. And Prince. Selmaya has never had an someone more fitting to sit Simbani upon her warrior. throne. Prince of Shapir, will you bear the burden of our crown? Will you become the next king of Selmaria? Okay. Do I become the king? Oh man, this is a heavy role. Is this the role playing choice that the CRPG addict was talking about? Because it is kind of a heavy choice. Even if, like, it's not like I'm actually, you know, if I become the king, I can't do the adventure of Quest for Glory 6 with this character. But that is a thing to think about. I think that, uh, I think I should do it. I think I'll do it. Out of a sense of duty, among other things. And, you know, maybe we can get some trade routes open between Shapir and Silmaria, you know, broaden the economy. Uh, maybe I'll, like, you know, one of my priorities as king will be vastly improving succession policies if they're not going to let me, you know, be the kind of fantasy king who's like, all right, what we really need is a democracy. Or at least maybe we can get a constitutional monarchy going. I'll do it. Add another title to the list. Behold, the new king of Silmaria. Huh. Why is my high score is zero? Or was that just the previous high score? And if I played through again, I don't know. Hey, Jagged. Hail to the king indeed. All right, deeds. Okay, sure. I did all of the things in the game. Oh, but not everything. What didn't I do? I did not apprehend Arestes. I didn't bathe a ring in paladin blood or in the river Styx. I didn't bring a clue to Erasmus. I didn't dance with the Dryads. 
Tries didn't want to do anything with me. I didn't get the deed to the gnome in. I didn't free four of the villages. Because I wasn't assigned to. Give the Lethe water to Selim. Marry Elsa. Marry Arana. So there was a way to get... Oh. Alright. This is problematic for me. To know that you marry Noir. Because the anti-hero... If I knew all this, like... The anti-hero would be marrying Budar. For sure. Or maybe Katrina. I mean, certainly the anti-hero is going to make the choice to resurrect Katrina. Town tokens? Oh, I could give up the throne to Elsa. I could sacrifice myself to save others? Offer to sacrifice? How, though? When was that an option? Is that an option? Oh, do you have to keep everyone alive to get the option of sacrificing yourself? Did Gort make the sacrifice? Didn't do the basket. I didn't tell Julinar about Andre or another thing. Okay. Yeah. I'll worry more about that for the uh, for the anti-hero run. Where I, like, I'm not gonna be I'm not spoiler reverse. I'll try to avoid learning anything about the special thief paths. But otherwise, we'll do stuff. Okay. Okay. And now my mouse is trapped again. So I cannot go to the intermission screen, but I'm going to take a tiny intermission here because I feel like, Aber, do you want lunch? You want lunch? Lunch time? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to go give Aber her lunch. I'll be right back. We'll talk about this, put a bow on it, and then we'll, uh, we got another thing on the agenda. So hang tight, gang. I'll be right back with you. Let's go, Abra. Come on, sweetie. Let's go get lunch. And we're back. Okay, so, um, you know what just occurred to me? Years into this whole streaming thing? I make these intermission screens when I could just toggle the camera view to a little sign down here that says intermission. I don't know, maybe that's something, that th it doesn't matter. It's not important right now. So. I am, you know, it of the things I see here, the ones I'm the most, uh, the ones I would have, like, obviously I was trying for a moment to achieve Gort lives through the battle, which I think is what would give me the uh, sacrifice options, which is, that is definitely the compelling role-playing choice that the CRPG addict was talking about, I'm sure, because that's a compelling choice. I think my paladin would do it if he had to. I'm not sure exactly how that goes down. Uh, I think not. I, I'm okay with having taken the throne instead of giving up to Elsa, because like, I think Elsa will be okay. Like, at one point, I guess Stefan is going to become the the next uh, Baron of of Spielberg. But, like, that's a bad idea. They should put Elsa and not... Uh, Elsa should be the Baroness and not her brother. But uh, otherwise, I think of these... Well, I mean, 
the basket thing is going to weigh on me. But um, more than anything, I do wish that I had been able to pull this off because I think that would be a cool like total totality of the ending of the the paladin like saves the day and then decides to take the throne. But then and then as his queen, he has a resurrected fade demigoddess. Uh, that seems like a very cool like fairy tale hero ending, but nonetheless, mostly very happy about this and how this all went down. And like, I do like it. Like, I wish Gort w Gort could have been developed more, obviously, uh, even just a tiny bit. But I do like the idea that after all, Gort was the sacrifice that stopped that stopped the dragon. Because, like, he was created just to be a hero. But he was created by two jackasses who had no real sense of, like, how to be a hero. And then he was a hero in the end of his own volition. So that's great. So, yeah. On the whole, I'm happy with this as a capper uh, to the Quest for Glory saga. I think that was a good ending for my character. Yeah, like, actually, you know what? I said they could have developed Gort a bit more. Absolutely unnecessary. We literally just need to know, oh, he's basically like a, he's he's Frankenstein's creature, except he's basically a golem. Yeah, I, uh, I mean, had the ending played last time, I would have accepted it. But once I took a whole week, I was just like, I was just like, I gotta keep Toro alive. I hope. I was hoping. I, I thought I'd be able to administer the potions. It's even better that you just give them to him and raise his stock up. Uh, I'm in here, Abra, and you know where Danielle is. And uh, yeah, yeah. I will say uh, okay. What disappointed me about this finale? Not that many things. Ooh. Yes. Please, Cedric. I would love to hear some more about it. I don't mind knowing as much. I want, Like I said, I want to try to keep the thief stuff, ex at least experience that fresh. But mostly, it seems obvious in hindsight. There's a whole big scene of Elsa being like, we might need this rack of fireproofing potions. <laughs> and look at them. They're right there. Slot number eight. And I forgot to keep drinking them. Oh, man. I should have given Gort the... Uh, not Gort. The uh, uh, Toro. The super axe. The Minotaur's axe. That would have been obviously appropriate we'll assume that the king knighted toro and granted him that axe uh you know that's a post credit scene and then toro sets out as a knight errant on his own heroic story yeah officially that's what happens um that also makes a lot of sense yeah okay yeah, could have done that better. And realizing that I could have done those things, I need to walk back a little bit some of my criticisms of that final battle. Because that uh, very much does allow you to use the game systems to manipulate what's happening. And ultimately, even when it's not optimal systems and they're kind of clumsy, if the systems let you do it, then it's, it, and you can you know, approach with different tactics and have a different result, that's a good RPG battle system. Or at least it's an okay RPG battle system. So credit to them there. Although, you know, combat is not something the game ever nailed. And I, I think that actually, like, atmosphere-wise, it was a steady downward spiral. I think the angle in the first game, in the in the uh, EGA, pardon me, in the EGA first game, where, you, like, every monster is, like, bearing down on you, Yeah, because I thought, I mean, I thought I was using it on him. From that point, I should have probably been like, 
experimenting with other things, but I was also trying to just get it done, right? Ah, well. This, uh, yeah. So I would say the things that I'm disappointed in, because there are a couple, I do wish that at some point Erasmus and, uh, and I came to remember Rakish's son's name, but also Rakish. Like, we saw Rakish standing there at the end, but like, I would have liked some kind of resolution on that plot line. I, uh, I understand it was the early 90s, and, uh, no, it wasn't. This was the late 90s. Sir Mixalot had come along. Uh, which is all to say that I do not like, like this was not part of my experience of the game, but actually it was because even in the dialogue, you could tell that the game was like, you know, of these two, uh, let's say, um, what is it? What is an acceptable word here? Uh, forward, very forward barmaids, uh, you know, the game was clearly being like, you know, here are our two enthusiastically consenting, uh, you know, in control of their own sexuality barmaids that are both constantly flirting and throwing themselves at you. But the game is pretty clearly like always saying like, you know, of these two, like Noir is the is the one that you're into and not Budar. And that is very clearly because uh, Budar has been blessed with the thickness. Um, so that's not great that's not great that does not hit the uh, like remember in Ultima 6 when you there, there's a is her name Andrea the fat barmaid in uh, in you and then she's into the blacksmith who's from a distant land and he's like a sumo wrestler kind of build type guy and it's setting you up to think the joke is going to be the really kind of standard like haha the even this fat guy doesn't want to be with a fat girl. But actually, when you when you mention, hey, the, the barmaid's into you, he's like, ah, too skinny for me, man. And that's a fun little gag, I guess. Uh, not saying it's super progressive, but it's like, it's a step above just being like, hey, check it out. Here's two barmaids that are coming on to you. But we understand that only the stick thin one is, a, is an actual romance option. I don't know. Not great. Not great. But it is what it is. Uh... Yeah. And then, yeah, like, again, I would have liked it. If, like, is there a way that, is there a path via which Punny Bones shows up and does a set <laughs> at No Man's Inn? Because I would have liked to see that. Uh, but generally speaking, I thought that this Capper story did a great job of pulling in threads from the whole saga. And uh, it's interesting how, like, they're all very standalone adventures. The hero comes to a new land. They do, like, Taught, like you know they pick up right where the last one left off so you get that connection but otherwise like you know they're very discreet biomes that you go to to have discreet adventures but they really do generate this kind of saga and the thing that I've been praising about this series since the very first one is that they uh, they really nailed the idea the uh, feeling of playing a role which is not really always something that RPGs, at least that, that computer RPGs or console RPGs, are focused on. If I, I, I cite the CRPG Act a lot, but if you read his definition, like the standards that a game needs to meet for him to count it as an RPG, as a CRPG that he reviews, uh, his standards do not uh, include the game as to give like role-playing choices. Because ultimately, if you did that, you would have to throw out like enormous numbers of games that are obviously CRPGs. Uh, but it's nice when they do when they give it to you, and this series gave it to us in full. Uh, there, I assume to the extent that they were taking influence in how they did their stat development. It had more to do with looking at Dungeon Master. I mean, it couldn't have had anything to do with looking at the Saga games or Final Fantasy II on the Famicom. But it's a great use of the use it to gain it system of stats because, again, it really gives you the feeling of, hey, I'm like, I am this dude. I'm like, I'm, 
what I choose to get better at, I will get better at if I put in the work. And your choices feel like they matter, even when they really kind of don't, in the sense that like every game is going to come to the general ending of you save the day. Uh, the multiple paths are great. The adventure game aspect of it, also great, because from the start to the end, with a, like a few exceptions actually right here in Quest for Glory 5, like the items that you must get on the Hydra Island when you're there, uh, one of which is rope, an object you should just be able to buy in the market. Uh, but otherwise, for the first four games and, and for the bulk of the seventh, fifth game, uh, this is a series where the adventure game puzzles are more likely to resolve to the kind of thing you should do to fix that problem, as opposed to relying on moon logic. Uh, or even fairy tale logic in many cases. It's just, it's just, you figure out what makes sense and you do it. And sometimes that tripped me up because I was, I was you know, like, like with the, the broken lever. Once I finally calmed down, I was like, what am I going to do about this? It's like, oh yeah, break it off. The game's not going to put us in a dead end state over you pulled on the lever using one of your four options. And then the answer is get another freaking stick and put it in there and use it as the lever. Uh, I really love all that stuff. Great characters, obviously, great writing from start to finish. Uh, well, from start to finish, with a major exception for Dr. Cranium, the loathsome, disgusting Dr. Cranium, uh, who did not work for me as comic relief and was not portrayed as a, as a sick person whose experiments you had to stop, which I kind of think you should. Uh, you know, once, once a dude has resurrected his... his uh, his corpse golem, you know, that corpse golem is a person, you should let it live, but like, you should not leave it to be his, his, you know, sex slave. But because they were thinking of those scenes as just jokes, I don't know. Maybe I'm applying a 2024 mindset to a, to a 30 year old joke. I don't know. But with all that said, uh, this is a wonderful series. Just a wonderful series of games that I'm so glad I played. They never really nailed it with the combat, but I appreciated that they kept trying. And I appreciate that... Uh, it's like... I think just like... PCs weren't really set up for this kind of thing, but like... An action RPG where the combat system is punch-out is... See, it feels obviously like a great idea, but the execution just wasn't ever really there. I saw a com uh, Corey Cole, if you're interested in hearing a lot of his thoughts about the series, whenever the CRPG Act is playing one of these games, uh, he's in the comments section, just sharing tidbits and responding to people's comments and criticisms and praise and everything. And... Ooh, that's another thing. Gotta do Hero U. That's been just sitting on my Switch for like a year now. Haven't touched it, but I will soon. Um, yeah, wow. But yeah, yeah. And so Corey Cole has actually said, oh, geez, I got to, OK. I need to uh, go and, and uh, one of these days, swing by a coal stream just to say hey you know wow thank you for having done this because it's just great it's just great just really really terrific warts and all just wonderful but yeah i saw like cory cole i saw his comment on the first game where he said like uh he basically said like it's a like I didn't like the system didn't come together and, and the best strategy the legitimate optimal strategy is always just to mash the attack button in the first game. Although graphically, I think that's the one where the fights feel the most intense. Uh, maybe like the second game or the third game had the best execution of a combat system. I like the idea of Quest for Glory 4s, although it didn't quite come together. And I like the idea of this one, but it didn't quite come together. And it doesn't matter because <laughs> the games are still great. Uh, yeah, wow. And like, enormously replayable. I'm looking forward to replaying it and doing different things and seeing what happens. 
Oh, that's all. Yeah, I got to do that. Uh, definitely. Definitely got to do that. And so, like, assuming the social media entity formerly known as Twitter survives long enough that I finish the Ultima series, because right now that's the place where I can imagine getting Richard Gary to notice me. But I'm waiting until I've beaten them all, and then I'm going to cut together a montage video of me reflecting on the tell Lord British about your accomplishment uh, stream. And then uh, even as recently, like I saw an interview with him a year ago where he was like, when people notify me, I try to respond in the same way that they notified me. So I'm hoping I can get him to like cut a cameo for me if I, if I notify him in video form. <laughs> but I guess we'll see. But yeah, okay. I definitely got to go and, and some upcoming Saturday. Meet the Coles and just tell them, hey, wow, thanks. This was great. I'm looking forward to trying Hero U and I'm looking forward to playing this again. And Anything else you do seems like it'd be pretty cool. Yeah. So in the end, what, what if I had to rank the Quest for Glory games? How would I do it? I don't think I could. Actually, I think I could. I don't know which one is number one, but I think two and four were my favorites. Let's call it a tie. I think the first one is is uh, definitely of the remaining three, the tightest experience. Even like three is a better story. Oh man, if I could get an interview, if, if I could get Richard Garriott to talk to me for an hour, I would waste the entire time trying to convince him that all of his ideas about using new technology are wrong and he should actually be making Ultima 5 Part 2. <laughs> Maybe I could sell him, like, you could use generative AI somehow to in, like broaden the keyword conversation system. Uh, yeah. But okay, wow. Quest for Glory. What a series. Uh, obviously, in most of the games, I struggled with the sequencing. The things that hung me up the longest were just not realizing that I had to do X thing in order to cause unrelated Y thing to finally occur. Uh, but when you consider the, the, the astonishing challenge of what they're doing, of trying to make these sort of immersive game where the worlds you're in feel like you're a participant in a story that's happening instead of just playing through a game story. Uh, it's kind of remarkable how few problems I had overall getting it to work. And I really am looking forward to doing the anti-hero run because although I may not know every, like maybe every hurdle that I had to overcome won't be the same for the thief. I can probably avoid some of those like multi-week like what's what why isn't anything happening uh scenarios and we can get a more like cohesive like just quick run through the story i think that'll be awesome oh man but yeah okay so two and four the best one uh also just excellent and like such a tight experience and it's definitely the one where the rpg mechanics even if the battle system is as cory cole is acknowledged just broken uh the rpg mechanics work the best in that one because the best rpg experience is starting as some scrub and becoming someone impressive which you can only do once in a series where you're carrying your person through uh i think three is a great story and i think i put it before five and yet five is still a thumbs up game for me so it's my least favorite and also an excellent game that I'm glad I played and that I look forward to playing again. Awesome. So let's talk about the near future, the near to medium future here. I uh, All of my dreams of using May and June to start to ramp up to vacation streamer mode with my increased free time uh, were shattered on the, on the, on the rocks of, uh, of everything that has happened in the last two months. Uh, a mix of being unexpectedly busy with work stuff in May and then, uh, you know, some bad things that have happened recently to the family. Uh, you know, 
my poor kitty and my invalid upstairs with her with her busted up knee uh which we got out we ran errands yesterday so she's on the mend and she's ordered a brace and we're gonna we're gonna get her back up and running but like i thought by now we would have debuted danielle and i are gonna do an intermittent stream called hey babe can we play this game i thought we'd have started that by now but we're gonna start it soon uh, once we can get her to the second floor <laughs> comfortably. Living in a three-level townhouse is not the thing to be doing when you're going to bust up your knee in a way that makes it impossible for you to go downstairs. Uh, and then... Yeah, so otherwise, though, vacation is coming. I'm going to work next week. But, because there's stuff I need to get off my plate before I go on vacation. And then vacation will start. Uh, so next Saturday is my first day of vacation. Obviously, the Saturday game is Dark Sun Shattered Lands and will remain so until I finish that. But otherwise, after today, I debut, right after we wrap up here, Wizardry Gaiden 4, The Throb of the Demon's Heart. Which uh, isn't a perfect pairing with Quest for Glory 5. So, you know, Tash Terry, if you're not sticking around for that, I'm not offended. <laughs> but, uh... It's, I've been looking forward to it, and it's a little self-indulgent, I think, as a streaming thing on a channel where I'm mostly playing more uh, narrative-driven RPGs and adventure games on the weekends. But I'm all, uh, it's not going to be the Sunday game. It's gonna, I'm going to do it here and there over vacation, but I'm going to start it right now. Uh, we're going to start Ultima 7 Part 2 Serpent Isle very soon, and my goal is going to be to get as much of that done on my vacation as I can, because it sounds like it's very long. Uh, then, next weekend, on Sunday, I'm thinking uh, PJ's been banging the drum for Phantasmagoria. I think I'll give it a shot. And then, the other big thing I want to do is get my 30-minute retro reviews going, which is going to be... It's going to... For at least for now, going to be confined to the classic games available through Switch Online for the Nintendo Entertainment System, Super Nintendo Entertainment System, Nintendo 64, Nintendo Game Boy, Nintendo Game Boy Advance, and Sega Genesis. It's a good service. Uh, a lot of variety there. Uh, and what I'm going to do is through some mix of choosing what I want to do, but also making a channel points reward where someone can be like, hey, do this one next. And... Uh, maybe having a randomizer when I'm in the mood. Uh, the goal is going to be to spend 30 minutes with the various games on this service and try... Uh, a lot of what I do on this channel winds up being about me discovering things that that the audience is familiar with. I'm gonna try to... And, you know, the audience may be familiar with many of these games, but in concept, what I want to do with the retro reviews is use my vast knowledge of video games and my ability to kind of find my feet in a game I'm not familiar with pretty quickly to try to capture what are, what are all these classic games about in 30 minutes and then uh, that'll give me two things one is the ability to do like a three hour stream but then have six videos to release on YouTube and boost by algorithmic discovery uh, but then also uh, I'm hopeful that Maybe it'll be useful to some people. They'll find out about a game they didn't know. Maybe some people, you know, they've got Switch Online so they can play Splatoon 3. I don't know why they would ever turn up to be watching my retro game stream, but I like the idea of people, you know, it's not a budgetary choice. It's not a consumer guide in that sense. But there's only so much time. So maybe I can help people figure out, you know, if I'm going to devote some time to some classic games. I got Switch Online. Which one? Which one should I do? Or maybe it'll just be fun. Whatever it is, I hope to get that going soon. I gotta make stream overlays for it. But then I'll fire that up and that'll be fun. Uh, moving into the medium future, I think I'll do Hero U before the anti hero run, but I'm not positive because I'm pretty excited for the anti hero run. Uh, then I will. What else is on the agenda? Um, I've got a lot of fantasy going right now and as I get through it we're going to head into a sci-fi fall for adventure games I'm going to start up the Space Quest series 
pretty cool. Uh, I've only ever played Space Quest 1 and only a little bit of it. I know that in some senses, it's very reminiscent of the early King's Quest games. It's text parser adventure in the Sierra uh, AGI engine. But I also know there's some major differences. For one thing, it's a very comedic series. Uh, for another thing, it's uh, the first game at least is very like, instead of the openness of King's Quest 1, it's a bunch of shorter, more confined areas. Like the part of the game I remember is you start on a ship that's been taken over by aliens. And that's only like X number of screens until the ship crashes. And then you're on the planet. And that's all I remember. But I'm pretty sure it goes like that from there. Like you're on the surface of the planet. Now you're in some alien palace or an underground something. or I don't know. But I'm really looking forward to that. Get another flavor of the classic Sierra adventure game uh, going. I don't know that it's possible to fit all this in. But uh, I've been telling Waffle Syrup for two years that I'll play Disco Elysium. So I'd like to do that. Uh, and then also, if, you've, you've prob if you're a fan of classic PC games, you've probably heard the big news that after many, many years of just working, uh, just Fred and Paul uh, of Toys for Bob fame, working with uh, Jason or Pebby, who I really got to... I gotta send Pebby a congratulations message because he's just been toiling for years as the lead coder on Urquan Masters 2 or, or real Star Control 3. Um, they've kickstarted it. They've been funded. They're looking to release next year. So I gotta do Star Control 3 and maybe Starflight 2 before that day comes. So that'll be exciting. And along the way, Greg and James will be beating them up and Greg James Rich Maybe Dan, uh, Danielle now and then. Maybe I can get Lauren back. I, I keep saying that like it's ever going to happen. But I, I will never give up hope. Uh, Michaela now and then. We'll keep on playing Frosthaven. And it's going to be a lot of fun. Sweet. So yeah, thanks to everyone who joined me on my journey through Quest for Glory. I really hope to uh, have as many of you back as possible for the anti-hero run when I do it. Maybe for Hero U. Maybe any other... You know, classic adventure games that, that ring your bell. And then, of course, the core audience who just show up. Uh, it's, it's great. It's awesome. I love that there are people who will just hang out with me and play a video game. Talk about it with me. So I really appreciate that. All of you. Sweet. Okay. So. Oh, I should click done. Do I wish to save? Yeah, sure. I'll call him James. Call the file James. He's going to play credits. Yeah, we got to watch the credits. And then I'll do the outro, but I won't sign off. I'll go to the thanks for watching screen for a couple minutes, and then I'll pop over to my other uh, scene collection, and we're going to dive in to Wizardry Gaiden 4, Throb of the Demon's Heart. wild to go back and compare the length of this credit sequence with the credit sequence of like Quest for Glory 1. That in itself tells a whole story about the uh, video game industry. It draws a line that uh, just kept going up to this day to the point where, you know, games uh, games can... Like a AAA game can sell five million copies, and, and like, and then like a bunch of executives have to throw themselves off the building. It's a failure.
another thing I want to do at some point. Like, I'm going to check out not all of Roberta Williams' other games, because, like, this this time machine or time travel or whatever it's called game of hers sounds like a real slog. And I've already read all of uh, Jason... Ah, oh, I can't think of the fellow's last name. Jason something, uh, who writes a blog called Renga in Blue. And that blog... Uh, has a, a CRPG addict like theme. It's the All the Adventures project. He's trying to play every adventure game. So he's still in like 1982 just playing text games. Like he's barely seen, like he's seen static graphics and a few animations, but he has not moved a character around with the arrow keys yet. Uh, but he did Time Quest or Time Machine or whatever it's called. And I've read all that. That's all I feel like I need to get. But like Phantasmagoria, obviously, especially by PJ's request, I'd like to do sometime soon. Uh, that's one. The, uh, Laura Bow games. Probably won't do Mixed Up Mother Goose unless, like, I get one of my nephews or my niece or some kid I know wants to participate. Uh, but then, if I can either, uh, justify to myself purchasing a VR headset or persuade my dear friend Lauren who got one for her birthday uh, to let me borrow it. Haha! <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, it's going to be the first uh, the first James in the game stream uh, with, with content warnings. And I don't mean the standard like you play Quest for Glory 4 and so Twitch automatically says, this is for certain audiences. Content warning, because it has a scene, famously troubling scene. Uh, fortunately, it's at the start of a specific chapter. I'll be able to say, all right, folks, you know, maybe like, you know, give yourselves 10 minutes and come back. All right. Wow. Quest for Glory. Five. Dragon Fire. Anyway, so the VR headset thing is because I would love to do uh, Roberta Williams' return. The Coles came back and did Hero You, kind of picking up, from what I understand, some of the themes of their, some of the ideas of the Quest for Glory games. Uh, Roberta Williams came back uh, by using new technology to go all the way back to the game that inspired her, the Colossal Cave Adventure. And they did a VR version of that, which you can also get in non-VR versions, but I like, I feel like the experience calls for VR. Uh, I'm not going to become a VR streamer, but I, I would love to do that at some point. So that's a, you know, that's a someday thing. My, op uh, my optimistic take here is that I'm not quite 40 years old, And I look younger than that, right? Just to just ignore the the shiny gray, the peppering of my hair, the salting of my peppery hair, and uh, so hopefully we got we got time to play a lot of games together as the as the years go by. All right, I'm gonna type a new title. Actually, wait, I'll do that during the intermission, where I'm gonna go to the thanks for watching screen. But remember, folks, if you wanna see what it was like. Uh, when Wizardry, when an ori original Wizardry game was made by Japanese developers for the Super Famicom, stick around. We'll be checking that out almost immediately. Uh, yeah, but that's when I'll change the title and the category, just in case there's a lot of uh, people checking the category for Wizardry Gaiden 4, a throb of the demon's heart today. All right. So let me do the wrap-up spiel. It's a weird week coming at you because, for one thing, uh... On Tuesday night, it's going to be Friday night Frost Haven. It's the only day that Rich can do it, and uh, he's got, he needs a he can't do Friday, and we're in the middle of a three week scenario, and it's all been a lot. And we would love to uh, put it to bed. We're hopeful we can win. We're in a tight spot. It's going to be really exciting. Win or lose, it'll be exciting. Uh, so that's happening on Tuesday, which means no Greg and James beat him up because although we could in theory do it on Friday, uh, if if uh, hey Stepinski. 
you're you're not in time for Quest for Glory 5, but you are just in time for Wizardry Gaiden 4, The Throb of the Demon's Heart. I love that subtitle so much. I need to say it every time I refer to the game. Um, yeah, so Friday Night Frosthaven on Tuesday, followed by uh, no Greg and James beat him up because Greg uh, has to come to my home for Greg and James beat him up. And... Uh, there are limits to how much of his Friday he wants to commit away from his lover, and that's fair. So he's going to spend time with her. Keep the heroes out. That sounds like a... like I can already imagine the themes of that game, but I haven't actually heard of it. Please tell me about it. Uh, with the caveat that I am going to be going to the thanks for watching screen for a moment, and then uh, coming back. So maybe... Cool. Okay, tell me more about it when I come back to the wizardry uh, collection, and I'll just re I'll finish my wrap up here. So, yeah, weird week coming. However, uh, I think I finally will actually start squeezing in some unscheduled stuff to get things up and going. Maybe we'll start Ultima Seven Part Two Summer Dial. Maybe we'll do more Wizardry Four. I figured we had like a dungeon, dungeon siege or. Uh, Dungeon Master, whichever one of those famous games is uh, is about being the bad guy. Cool. I gotta look into that. That sounds just just in concept. That sounds like a lot of fun, and I do love a good co-op game. Next weekend on Saturday, we're back with Dark Sun Shattered Lands, and we'll see because it's it's gonna be my first day of vacation, and maybe that will mean. Danielle and I do something, but probably not because her knee's all fucked up. <laughs> so I'm hoping to do, uh, if I got the time, I'm going to spend as much time in Dark Sun as possible. I really missed playing it yesterday, and I'm excited to play more of it. Uh, next Sunday, we'll start Phantasmagoria, a Roberta Williams uh, full motion video adventure, the thing she considers the crowning achievement of her career. Will I feel the same? I don't know. We'll check it out. Should be interesting. Uh, then, before you know it, it'll be Sunday again, and I just said what's happening on Sunday, because we're done with Classic Glory for now. Sweet. Remembering that this is not really the end, because I'm going to come right back, and we're going to play Wizardry together. If you stuck around to the end, thanks for sticking around to the end. If you came and you left, you can't hear my voice. I'm glad you stopped by anyway. So thanks for stopping by. And until the next time that we're all on the same quest for glory together, take care of yourselves, and be kind to everyone you meet.